welcome back and just a quick disclaimer before we begin i don't want us to be accused of clickbait with the thumbnail but this video genuinely is going to include a lot of what we call budget guitars now i'm very aware that a lot of the things we feature are in the a thousand pound plus price back bracket so there's gonna be lots of things in this video that are sub one thousand pounds and many things that are even sub 500 pounds i mean in the guitar world what is budget these days with all the big factories uh, and brands putting their prices up all the time for new stock um, it is very difficult to really know what is budget these days but anyway we are going to start with a few higher end things just to kick the video off and then if you stick around uh, wait till those few things are gone through then we will have a look at some of these um slightly lower price things just for a change uh just to interest everyone with all budgets and hopefully you do like looking at this lower value stock um let us know in the comments whether you do or whether you don't but we are going to be back next week with a video with a lot more higher value stuff so we thought we would sandwich this in between um there will be some really cool featured videos coming up because we do have an announcement that the Bernie Marsden collection will be taking place on the 11th of June. So the next auction, which is the 11th and 14th of June, the first day of the sale, the Bernie Marsden collection. A lot of you would have already seen what was on offer in the September sale. We had just under 30 guitars for that sale. We've actually got a lot more. It will be possibly a 150 lot sale. So that's quite exciting. We're not going to cover that too much now. The catalog previews for that will be coming up in the next uh, one and a half to two weeks. So please do watch this space for further details on that. And then we will do a couple of videos focusing on that collection alone. But let's have a look at what we've coming up, got coming up in our auction on the 11th to 14th of June. So like I said, we're going to have between five and ten things that are pushing a thousand pounds and above as I already said so as part of our disclaimer but there is a 60th anniversary Stratocaster there we go the diamond anniversary and this is the version that has the little diamond or I very much doubt it is a diamond because that would increase the guitar's value even more so um, but a faux di diamond in the head um, so that is the 60th anniversary there we go, there's a plaque on the back as well, which came with a special case, uh, the silver, silver coloured case. And we got all the tags and bits in there. Right, another thing to point out is you will notice a drop in audio quality in this video. We are very sorry for that, but our microphone literally broke just before we pressed record for today. Um, so we will be back with our next video normal service will be resumed uh, we'll have a mic a lapel microphone that's working so yeah do apologize about the sound quality in this video but we are we are working on it um so here we have a get all the catches open a very nice taylor guitar so this is a taylor custom tf acoustic guitar um, so these are sort of worth £1,500 to £2,000. Um, Indian rose with back and sides on this one. It's got the standard Taylor uh, expression pickup system. So electroacoustic there. The open open headstock or slotted headstock there. Um, and yeah, it's a, it's a very, very nice thing indeed. Um, they didn't come with that often. We haven't had many of them in in the past. But um, yeah, it's in very, very good condition with its original case. We have another acoustic from the same seller. Um, so this is a 2018 Gibson Parlor Rosewood AG. The AG stands for Avant Garde. And it's basically a smaller body, the whole Parlor word. It tends to mean a smaller guitar, so it's a smaller bodied acoustic, maybe for suitable for those who struggle to get their arms around a big jumbo. Um, but there we go, it's a Indian Rosewood back and sides again. Nice grain on that one, mahogany neck, as you'd expect from most Gibson guitars. And you've got the electrics inside as well. 
and the original case, but just in yeah, good, honest condition, good to go. So this is exactly what it says on the case. It is a heritage. Uh, the guys that took over the original Gibson factory in Kalamazoo. And this is a very, very nice guitar indeed. This is only the second of this model I've had. This is the Golden Eagle model. Um, there we go. And in the sort of a tobacco uh, sunburst, <clears throat> I guess we call that. But it's a stunning guitar, it really is. Um, really, really highly figured maple back and sides. Tiny bit of buckle wear on the back there, but it's generally acceptable. Um, and these tend to hammer price, they tend to sell for around £2,000. I think the last one we sold made 2200 hammer, but they are very good guitars indeed. Um, very stylish guitars. No expenses spared on these. And there we go, with the original case again. So this is a very rare Les Paul. And less than 25 of these made. And you'll notice the difference with this one. So it's basically a, a, a 50s style, late 50s style, uh, Black Beauty Les Paul Custom 3 pickup. But you'll notice a different control configuration. We've got the extra one up here and three in a line down here. Now, what is this? Well, this is the Mickey Baker signature Les Paul. Um, it was it was a model that came out and essentially didn't didn't really continue. Um, very few orders made. But Mickey Baker was an American guitarist of of some note. Um, there was the duo Mickey and Sylvia, um, and he was a but he was a recording art guitarist for various people. Um, good session player, but this was sort of the signature model. Nice big neck on this one. Um, but interesting story behind this one. So the very, very first guitar off the production line, um, which is not this one, I will add that now, but the very first one off the production line ended up um, being purchased and somehow got damaged. Um, and the, the guy who had bought the very first one, um, he sort of kicked up a bit of a fuss and said, you know, I've paid a lot of money for this guitar um it's not really good enough and gibson were said yep yeah, fair enough well we'll make you a replacement this is that replacement so this is the replacement for the very first one made um so um, we've got all this in confirmation as well we've got some uh documents from gibson that do confirm those facts i do have a an interesting piece of paper here and there we go so in 2000 with this serial number here wash it through washington music the first guitar supplied to a chuck rubery that was damaged and then you'll see here this is the serial number of the one we have and this is the one that went in place to this person chuck rubery i don't believe he's he's a guitarist of note um but um he obviously a, a guitar collector um, I wasn't happy with his first one being damaged, so there it is. So, very rare guitar, less than, like I said, 25 of these made, confirmed by Gibson's Records. And that is the Mickey Baker model Les Paul. And this is one of the last um, guitars within this expensive category, um, or expensive sort of things, over a £1,000. But this one, these are quite valuable now. So this is the... Martin John Mayer model. There it is, the acoustic guitar, the OMJM John Mayer signature model, hand signed by John Mayer to the label as well as CF Martin, but a limited edition guitar. There we go. Indian Rose with back and sides, but the OM guitar, um, and a lot of uh, press about John Mayer at the moment, certainly within the guitar world, because Obviously, he's um, just done his solo, big solo tour. Um, very recently been in the UK last week, I believe. Um, this one's in very, very good condition with the original case. So a really nice John Mayer signature Martin acoustic. So this guitar is 203 years old. Um, so we do sell antique and classical guitars. So this is a, a parlor guitar, a maker called Delanoi, as the label suggests. Um, didn't make many guitars, I believe he was mainly a violin maker, but yeah, this one was made in 18, 
21 and it's just stunning and it's still very very playable um, as typical with sort of guitars of this period you can get these friction tuners so you kind of like tune up and you've got to jam the jam the pegs in um, tight so they don't slip um, but it's a very very nice thing indeed it's sort of got this mahogany back and sides and I guess the grain on it, it's almost like the Cuban mahogany so um, quite hard to get hold of these days it might not be Cuban but it is some form of mahogany um, nicely grained and the very tightly grained spruce top as well and all this intricate inlay so amazing that this guitar is 200 years old um, and always nice to feature things like this because I don't think we feature them enough right we are now dipping into things at the lower scale budget so not the original case for the guitar um, in a Taylor case but there is the Martin LX Black so the mini Martin series and they're just good armchair guitars, nice and fun. This one's got a pickup in as well. And yeah, perfect little travel guitar, really. Especially with those hotter months ahead of us. So here we have a Squire Telecaster that has got some modifications. But again, we're in the sub £500 category. We do, though, have an upgrade with these two Gibson humbucker pickups. Um, so that's a nice, nice upgrade there. But it is essentially you know telecaster custom we've got the bound body and i'd imagine that would bring somewhere in the region of with the pickups three to 350 something like that so a lot of guitar for your money especially with those gibson pickups so we have another squire um so this is a squire jaguar the hh1 um and these are just these are very good guitars sort of seymour duncan design pickups you will see the fronts faded quite a lot there is the Fiesta red back, and it's gone more orange on the front, um, with a few lacquer imperfections there. But these are very well-made guitars. This is sort of uh, in the it, with, with our later years. I mean, where are we there? 2010. So, yeah, Squire really, really upping the quality of their guitars and and the various um, series that they did. Um, but this is a a good quality guitar, and. I actually have a Fender Stratocaster from around the same period and it is my go-to Strat now. I've got a lot of time for them, even you know, with having technically higher value and what are supposed to be better guitars, but I really, really do have a lot of time um, just because they are really good quality. There we go, Squire Jaguar. So here we have a guitar from 2023. So this is a Squire Mustang and it's nice, cheap and cheerful. Hammer price, 100 to 150, but a great little starter guitar. Um, or even if you just want a, a decent Mustang, I mean, the only thing you really need to do is upgrade the pickups and it's everything else is good. Um, but there we go, Squire Mustang from 2023. And here we have a Light Ash Fender Telecaster. Um, so the Light Ash series, these were one of a few models that were made in a Korean factory. So made in Korea, these ones. So we got the Light Ash uh, body, natural finish, and the really nicely figured neck there, Birds Eye Maple neck with the, I have seen uh, high, higher figured Birds Eye Maple necks on these, um, but with the abalone dot inlays, Seymour Duncan pickups. Um, but yeah, they are they are a very good guitar for the money. Um, hammer price, these tend to come in in the region of three to four hundred pounds, sometimes a little bit more, um, but a lot of Telecaster for your money there. So this is something a bit different. I don't think we've ever featured one of these in one of our videos before. This is a uh, from the sort of 1950s period, German made. This is a Musima record. And just look at the carve on that top. And um, this is something that was, um, yeah, designed designed in Germany, known as the German Carve. And, yeah, really, really interesting, solidly made guitar. And it's a really, really different thing, isn't it? And there you go, you've got the, the ply neck there. It's a big, solid, chunky neck. But these have become very popular in recent years. We, we've got replacement tuners there, Kluson-style tuners. We do have the originals included. Um, the pickups are all working well. I think the um, the neck pickup 
is about 2k lower on the output than the bridge pickup so and you can notice a difference but they are great sounding pickups obviously we don't do sound bites in these videos you have to take my word for it but yeah that's just something different isn't it so these eastern european guitars always kind of wacky looking but always easy to spot and yeah this will probably bring in the region of five to seven hundred pounds um so yeah good good vintage guitar that is a little bit different and something else a little bit different again um european we're not in the eu but we're still european so this was made in england so this is a burns tr2 and essentially it's in really really nice condition apart from we've got some typical binding issues um i think every tr2 that i've seen has had some kind of binding restoration so it's definitely not unusual um but yes very very different europeans know how to make a different guitar we're missing the burns logo that should be up here unfortunately and we're also missing a gear cover for the tuner on the back and the binding will need addressing but apart from that it's um it's all there in good original condition and we've got the original fitted case as well, which is another thing that's um, not often seen. So here we have a artist model. And it's quite refreshing to see an artist model that doesn't have the artist's name just scrawled all over it. So this is a Hagstrom Super Viking, but it is the Justin York uh, model. They're the Paramore guitarist. Great band Paramore. Um, and there it is. So... Um, I'd say almost a bit of an unusual guitar for a band like Paramore to use, but hey, it's um, you know, it's a, a stylish guitar, and yeah, it's just um, no indication on the guitar itself with his name banded all over it. But this is the Justin York of Paramore signature guitar from 2017. So a lot of you have heard of Fano guitars, Dennis Fano, very high-end boutique guitar. So this is the uh, budget range. Revolta guitars, so designed by Fano. Um, so this is the Regatta model, and I really, really like these guitars. They're all really cool designs, very well made indeed. And there we go, that's the one in natural finish. Um, just the two knobs, two pickups with the switch, and the headstock, a very sort of um, unique headstock as well. So this one's from 2020, so it's only a few years old, and it's in good original condition with its case. So in this boss case is another Revolta guitar. So this one is in some form, I'm not exactly sure what they call it, some form of metallic blue. If it was Gibson, it would be almost Pelham blue. It's a bit lighter than Pelham blue. But there we go. This is the Combi Combinata model. And there we go. More of a solid body and similar idea though. This one made in Korea in 2022. But another good design from Revolta, or designed by Dennis Fano. It's not the same guitar, I promise. Just someone, all from the same collection, obviously had a lot of time for these cases. This is a really cool looking guitar. So this is the Gretsch G52302. When I eventually get it out of its clasps, it's the Electromatic series, and there we go. Isn't that a cool looking guitar? Good quality as well. Where was it made? China, but don't let that put you off. 2022 Chinese made guitar, and yeah, a lot of fun. It's got the Bigsby Trem, and this is a, um, I believe this was kind of um, a model they bought out for the 140th year of Gretsch. It's got a nice pearlescent back and that blue top. Really, really striking, cool looking Gretsch there. What did you say about that last guitar? Oh, it's like the coolest Gretsch I think I've ever seen. There you go. Endorsed by our Chris. <laughs> it's the coolest Gretsch guitar he's ever I'm seen. A, I'm, not, I'm not a big Gretsch fan, which I feel like a bit of a criminal saying, but... There we go. I think that's a good endorsement, though. Um, if we're going by looks only, obviously. Um, so here we have an Airline Map Standard guitar. So it's a modern airline, not one of the uh, American vintage ones, but... I think that looks insanely cool. I love the colour, love surf colours. This is really, really nice striking surf green. Hopefully the uh, 
the camera is doing it justice, but it's just in it's in great condition with its original gig bag. In the Ibanez case, we have an Ibanez. So this is the Ibanez AZ2204. I'm just gonna check that there. It is indeed BK, which will mean the black finish. But this is a good quality Ibanez. Um, I always really, really like the, these uh, roasted necks. This is from the Prestige series. Got the roasted maple necks. Really, really solid. Um, very good at uh, coping with temperature changes as well. If you are ever in that kind of environment, so you've got the good quality Goto tuners there. And yeah, it's a really good guitar. Seymour Duncan pickups and Ibanez guitars are just fantastic quality, regardless of where they're made. This is one of the Japanese made ones. Comes in the deluxe uh, plush lined Ibanez case and it essentially looks brand new. Um, and judging by the serial number, that is from 2021, so only a few years old. And this hammer price will come in around the mid hundreds, so great guitar for the money. A lot of guitar for the money. So here we have another Ibanez guitar. This is the Ibanez AZ42P. And this is a lovely, simple looking guitar. One for the rockers. <coughs> punk rockers um there we go it's just a really nice stylish super strat style this is from the ibanez premium range uh, indonesian made as most of these are these days uh, from 2022 roasted maple neck again got locking goto tuners so all good quality hardware and seymour duncan humbucker pickups so hh spec with the trem um, and the coil switching Really, really nice guitar, great condition, pretty much as new. And again, you're looking at the, the mid-hundreds price point. So really, really great guitar for the money. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks so much for joining us today. I really hope you didn't mind looking at some more budget things. Like I said earlier in the video, let us know in the comments because it's always useful to know really what you guys want. But we're always very aware we're featuring higher value stuff um, that could be out of a lot of people's price range um, but we did see some very very nice things right at the start of the video as well so like i said thank you for watching please do stay tuned to our website guitarauctions.com and of course gardenerholgate.co.uk and our social channels instagram at guitar auctions facebook is also guitar auctions at gh and especially this YouTube channel because we do have further announcements regarding the Bernie Marsden collection which is coming up on the 11th of June and like I said we will do a couple of videos exclusively featuring things that are coming up we did have just under 30 guitars we've now got certainly over 60 guitars maybe even more than that we're still working through it all now but there will be around I guess probably about 150 lots in that collection, including amps, pedals, loads of cool gear um, from Bernie Marsden's 50 year career. Um, so obviously sadly left us in August, 2023, um, just before the auction we were going to have in September. And we're now in a position where we can offer his collection to the market. So keep an eye on the website because previews will be coming up and keep an eye on socials because we will start to post things, especially on Instagram and Facebook, we'll be posting some of his gear um, in advance of really the catalog going out. So if you really wanna know what's coming up, then of course, keep an eye on that. And as always, please remember to subscribe to the channel, like this video, hit the bell icon so you are notified of those future videos. And we really look forward to seeing you next time.